They kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our Master, has embraced us. Let us stand for prayer. Our loving Father in Heaven, we gather here to honor the memory of Uncle Lautani and Asaila. In a very unique way, and with the gifts and abilities and passions that you instilled in him, uh, we have been blessed by the way that you used his life to be a blessing to others. May we celebrate how we heard your voice in his life, and may we grow closer, continue to grow closer, as we remember those unique blessings. In Jesus' name. Please remain standing as we sing the song, Tandam to your God.
time because we have to be done here by 12.30. We have to be at the grave, grave site by 1.30. Please remember that. And it takes about 45 minutes to get there. Thank you.
that's all I was briefed in. And he was feared by all animals. <coughs> he was a great butcher. And he loved his organ meat and his beer and stuff. <laughs> Dad and I had a bit of a language barrier, but he always got his point across. He had fun mispronouncing my name, calling me Greg Wiggle. <laughs> I would return the favor by calling him Mr. Sinelo. <laughs> Another thing that Dad found so funny was getting me to eat something really spicy, a potluck. But I got wise to that. <laughs> but in all seriousness, Dad was a very spiritual, loving man. So I'm going to Last memories with him. Was his face light up? And I'd bring one of my boys into the room where he'd be watching TV all day in his last year. So that spark of love, his faith, something I'll always remember. Thank you. Emotions and nervousness are all working together against me. So it's, excuse me, if my voice trembles. I want to express our heartfelt appreciation <coughs> to all of you for choosing to spend your precious time with us this morning. I want to say a few things about. My, my father died because it's, it's so touching and so unique to me. Hearing that it was going down quite rapidly, the cyborgs and the Adventist church members decided to come and have their best friends at his house. My dad's own pastor members of his church and the other friends were there. With him as well. There were five ministers there that night who were praying for us. <coughs> About the time <coughs> prayer meeting was about to be over, my dad breathed his last. It seemed to me as if he were waiting for the worship to be over before. And soon after that, my cousin Pastor Kima Saira started singing the song. There's a lad that is very big. Pretty soon everyone joined him. In the sweet by and by, we shall read on that beautiful song. I thought it was the most beautiful song I've ever heard. I thought <clears throat> it brought so much peace and comfort to me, and I believe to mom and the rest of the family as well. I just want to thank everyone who was there that night. As you have read from the bulletin, my father was just a young man of 14 years old when his father died at the age of 42 in January 1938. Thus, the responsibility of chieftainship rests on his young shoulders. Furthermore, he had four younger sisters and a brother for whom he felt responsible to be a father to him. At the same time, he needed to continue his education. Fortunately, he had a wise and capable mother who was able not only to take over the governance of the village, with the help of the village elders, <coughs> but was also able to teach him the ropes as it were. There was a big hole in the chieftain's house where the chief and the elders would preside over all issues pertaining to the welfare of the village. 
I want to give you a small glimpse of my dad and his father. As a chief, as I remember it, I was a very young, but I can't remember a certain incident involving a young couple that caused some sort of an uproar in the village. The couple was brought into the big hall where my dad and as chief was sitting with his elders. After listening to competing arguments and consulting with his elders, he passed judgment that seemed to satisfy all parties concerned. Another incident I remember is about one of my friends who was caught stealing 70 rupees from his parents. They brought her to the chief for discipline. He gave her a few light whippings on her behind, <laughs> then talked to her kindly about honesty and how the habit of stealing could destroy her life. That's my memory of him as chief in action. As for his siblings, he admitted to me later in life that he became more of a disciplinarian to make sure that they grew up to be wholesome citizens. They gave him great respect even after they were married and had their own families. I think they were even a little afraid of him. Dad was a hardworking man honest and kind, hospitable. Their door seemed to be always open. People walked in and out of their house, and many of them would head straight for the kitchen and open the pots and pans to see what was there. He also exercised great self-discipline and self-control. For instance, as a young chief, he was given too much drinking and smoking until someone advised him to go to a Seventh-day Adventist high school called the Subterranean School, located in the then Castle Hills. Upon hearing that no one was about to think, drink or smoke in this school, he decided to quit drinking and smoking right then and there. And since then, he never smoked or drank again. It was at this school that he learned about his Adventist beliefs and was baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He loved the Lord and served him the best he could for as long as he could. There was one thing he used to do that I really hated. If he thought I was a bit upset, he would make sure that he asked me to pray for family worship. And if I didn't pray, he would make everyone kneel until I didn't. I really hated that. He had high hopes for his children and grandchildren and expected, expected them to reach the highest level of education they possibly could. As for me, he had the idea that I should become a medical doctor, even though I wasn't very keen. He did everything he could towards this goal, going as far as asking that the chief minister of Assam State to reserve a seat for me in a certain medical institution. On the other hand, he would tell me, you are so slow. How can you become a doctor? You will kill your patients. No wonder I took a completely different course. One of the things he taught us was to do the best we could. No matter what task, he was the rock and the foundation of our entire side of life. Even after his stroke, he was not able and was not able to communicate with us and have our names all mixed up. He still drew our family together. Now that he is gone, it feels as if the rock has been pulled out from him and us. But now he is resting in the bosom of the rock he loved so much and trusted. I'm going to miss him back. So the I'll see you on the September At this time, I'd like to present thoughts and recollections and special moments of other members of the family. Here's what granddaughter Sanofari has to say about her apple, which means grandfather and so This is my favorite memory of doing something together with apple. 
after talking, he helped us in a deer. He made me drag a huge carcass out of the car, hang it up with his help in the shed, and spin it. I don't know about the many grandpas teaching their granddaughter how to spin a deer. During the whole process, he was saying and lecturing as to how I should always be prepared for anything life gives us. Work hard, trust in God, and be prepared. Here, is, here are some thoughts from Dara Dika, uh, Nami Dika. Arthur is the only man that bought and sells our kitchen 24-7 all year round, probably a world record. He is not afraid to even to give advice or counsel straight up. He likes to know what we are talking about. He is always willing to help. You can count on him. He is accommodating and he is not a big fan of big book yearbooks. Thank you, Dad for all the things you have done for me, always protecting me, making sure I'm okay. Mom and Dad gave me so much love and support that I did not deserve. <coughs> this one is from Bath and his daughter-in-law. There was a time when Dad sat around, moping for two days, refusing to talk to anyone. Even when Mom called from work, he wouldn't talk to her. I thought he was sick and I got really worried. So I asked Liz to, to ask him what was wrong. Apparently, he was watching the morning news in the bedroom when mom told him to go to the living room to watch the news because she wanted to exercise. So he moved to the living room to watch the news. But in a short while, she came and told him to go back to the bedroom because she wanted pets to practice playing piano. He told her he was fed up of moving around so often, and mom told him to shut up. So he said he was really following her instructions. <laughs> the following tribute is from his niece, Yet whose mother was the youngest in the family. My brother, my sister, and I lost our parents when we were still very young. Ever since then, my uncle became a father figure to us. He was our guardian, someone who could try to. He was the one who taught us the ways of life. One of the things he told us many times over was that whatever task we undertake, we should do it to the best of our ability. One of the things I remember about him was how carefully he observed the Sabbath. While they went to church, I used to clean their room and wash their bedrooms, bed sheets. When he found out what I had been doing, he got quite upset and said he'd rather sleep on dirty sheets than get them washed on the Sabbath. My sister walked in me and I feel his loss very deeply. We will miss the sound of his voice, the wisdom of his advice, and most of all, his presence. For nephew in law, Tariq Amiga, the Afghanis husband. The following quotation from a 5th century BC Chinese philosopher and writer, Lao Tzu, describes as, describes that best. A great man prizes three things. The first is gentleness, the second is frugality, the third is humility. By being gentle, he can be bold. By being frugal, he can be liberal. And by being humble, he becomes a leader among men. We are deeply grateful for your presence today, which gives us much comfort and peace. Thank you so much for being here. The song, It Is Well, which is going to be sung by the Miso SDA Church Water, is a favorite song of Mrs. Silo. She has, I remember her choosing this song many times in the church before our present church. And, uh, 
Before that, in the first major of Jones and even at Sligo, it is well. It's a favorite of hers. I would like to invite the Mizo SDA Church Congress at this time. Silo, 
I call him Matangliena, which means my father, and Namoi, simply because also I'm from Sielsu village where he was a chief. I knew him, I knew him, uh, his, I didn't know his father very well because I was very little and I knew his mother very well. If I have a time to tell you today, I could tell you how his mother and his father, Lalung Nema, how they courted each other. Very humorous uh, story. Maybe I can share uh, with the Mizo for some other time in Facebook. <laughs> he was, uh, his death was a historical significance for the Mizo people. I would like to bring up that aspect because uh, a lot of other things you can see in your bulletin there and I don't want to repeat things. Uh, so I, I'm interested solely because I come from the same village where he was a ruler there. So something, some of you, maybe majority of you may never know how he became a chief. With him went the last silo dynasty of chief chieftainship, especially from the line of Benkuaya Silo. Let me explain. His great-grandfather Benkuaya, his, grand, his grandpa's father, that is, was a historical figure. By the way, everything is historical today, right? <laughs> the very fact that you are here, maybe years from now we'll look back, maybe it will be in a t-shirt. You know, I was there when the last chief uh, <laughs> memorial was conducted here and uh, you, you are all historical people here today. Uh, his grandpa was a historical figure especially whose infamous acts on in uh, 1871 with the British indirectly resulted in the entrance of Christianity to Mizo people. I'll explain that in a moment. Now back to time in history. The British had already annexed Burma and India to their empire. When the British finally annexed the area where the Mizos lived, they were surprisingly amazed to find large number of villages and towns, units of administration running independently one another and all headed by a silo chief of immense local standing. The structure of Mizo society at that time was like that of the ancient city of Greek, uh, Greece, all independent city-states. But when the time comes to fight outside enemy, they all stand together. And that, especially when they know the outside wall, if there's a, tr a threat of compromise. Now, how did it all start? Maybe I'm, I hear myself echo here. How did it all start? Let me take you back to the 16th century of Mizo society so we can understand better how Lal Tangliena Silo became a chief of Sielsu. It is said that the Mizos lived in Lentlang, which is inside Burma now. You know, the British have a tendency to draw boundary just arbitrarily and it's no wonder many measles live in Burma side and many in India side. Anyway, uh, we are told that it was the Namte, Namte clan who invited Zamoka and his six sturdy handsome sons to accept chieftainship. One of Zamoka's son was Changura. Changura's descendant preferred to call themselves Silo. That's how silos become the ruling family over almost all the areas inhabited by the Mesos until 1954. So what happened in 1954? That's when the official administration of British abolished chieftainship in Mizora. Lantang the silo was one of the last silo chiefs who whose chieftainship have been stripped off officially in 1954. 
and this included, by the way, my uncles, who were chief in another sector in the eastern part of uh, Mualung village. Even my long before 1954, there were many rajas and many kings in all parts of India. By the time India gained independence in August uh, 15, 1947, all the rajas and all the royal families of India had already surrendered their princely state to the Indian Congress. Fifty rajas joined India. Thirteen rajas joined Pakistan. And two rajas decided to remain independent. That's Kashmir and Hyderabad. Each independent sovereign nations. They did not have to join India or Pakistan and remain independent if they wished to, but later on they were persuaded by the British Viceroy, the Indian Congress, and Zia to join either Pakistan or India. So seven years after Indian independence, many years after the Rajas have chosen their sides, Mizoram was still under the old system call silo lal, silo chieftain system. The Mizos do not call their leader Raja or kings, no, they don't do that. They call them lal, which means chiefs or lord. Lal Tamliana, my rough translation of his name, means uh, the famous big chief, famous big chief, all right? Silo means unshakable or no shaking. So in 1954, the unshakable hereditary rulership of the Silo clan came to an end. A Silo chief was a benevolent ruler, not an oppressive ruler. A Silo chief was uh, uh, supposed to be able to look upon all his subjects under him, under his jurisdiction, as his own children. And he was bound to help them in their adversaries, counsel them in their difficulties, reward them in their achievement, and punish them when they were found guilty of misdeeds or infringement of the established customs. And such was the job of Potanglian Asylum. The villagers, for their part, were to obey his orders implicitly, carry out errands, assigned to them individually and collectively to help the chief all possible ways. Now during those days, those years when the silos were expanding, ever expanding their territory, they would assign their children, usually the oldest of the family, to curve another territory. The chief would appoint them to to be independent ruler over that territory. So, the story of Chief Tanglian Tan Asylum would not be complete without mentioning his great grandfather, Benkuai Asylum, who was born in 1825 and died in 1879. His encounter with the British, his actions indirectly brought Christianity to Mizora. In January 21, 1871, Chief Benkwe Asylum of Silam had encountered with the British establishment outside of Mizoram. Not only did Benkwe's people brought home war booty, they also brought home Mary Winchester, only six years old girl. Her father had died in the encounter. One of Ben Kuei's warrior was named Van Chuoma. Van Chuoma told the rest of the team not to harm the little girl who was shaking in fear over his father's body. Van Chuoma protected her and personally brought her home to Silam, to the chief's house. There, the chief Ben Kuei adopted her as her, his own child and they call her Zolu Di. By the way, some of Mizos will remember the first Mizo to become Christian 
I mean, to become Christian pastor was Van Chuma. This warrior Van Chuma who brought Mary Winchester home is no other than Van Chuma's father. And you'll also be interested to know that Pastor Van Chuma's son is Van Kama, a famous Mizo poet, a father of famous singer Van Lukui and Van Arwate, who have sung in general conference meetings in times past. The incident of Mary Winchester hit the headlines in London, major newspaper like the Observers and the Pioneer. They ran the story and there was a public outcry, understandably. And this incident pricked the nerves of the British Crown and soon the Crown decided to send military expedition to Lusai Hills, it was called Lusai Hills, it was not called Mizoram in those days, not only to take back Mary Winchester but also to punish Benko Ayasaira. <coughs> They did this not once, not twice, but three times. They finally took back Mary Winchester to England. But after fighting with the measles for 20 years, after the measles were finally subdued by military might, they realized they had not won the hearts of the measles people. They still face sporadic amb ambushes and random attack by the Mizo warriors. They couldn't understand why. Why is this happening? Finally, when the British found out their animistic beliefs, that killing the enemy was rewarded by Paul. That's uh, really strange. How Paul come to the picture coming to uh, the Mizo story? I don't know. But he. If you kill your enemy, Paul, who stand at the gate of Pielra, which is heaven, will, will not shoot at you. Then you'll have an entrance to uh, Pielra. And that it was the means of belief. And that is why they keep fighting, even though they were already subdued by military might. And finally, let me make it short sure here. And what the military might could not do, the gospel message of Jesus Christ won the hearts of Mizo people. Welsh missionary were to be credited for their hard work. Ben Kuei reigned from Siloam and surrounding areas. He divided his territories to his seven sons. Kam Liena was chief of Tenzo. Secondly, Tung Buddha, chief of Lam Chief. Thirdly, Lao Shima, chief of Ser Chief, and Thong Liana, chief of Pang Lian, the dear Kai, Lung Belzo, these are a suburb of Siel Su. And then number five, Sang Vila, chief of Siel Ha. And Shang Bung, Shang Buonga, who became chief briefly, and then he died early. And then seventh is Pumpawa. Pumpawa was not his biological son, but he was a uh, warrior captured by Ben Kuaya. Ben Kuaya admired his courage and he adopted him as his own son. He even gave him a place to rule. So after Tong Liana died, his son Lalung Nema took over and reigned in Siel Su. Unfortunately, he too died early. That's when his young son Lal Tang Liana Silo became chief in his place. Unfortunately, Lang Tang Liana Silo was only 14 years old when his father died. He was next to the line to rule, but he was too young to rule. So his mother, Darin Pui, Darin Pui co reigned with him until he became of age. Lang Tang Liana Silo ruled from uh, there till 1954, when the Silo chieftain system was finally abolished. About this time of the abolishment, the chieftain system, there arose a Mizo political party. This was the first Mizo political party called Lushai Commoners Union. Later on, they changed their name to Mizo Union. 
one of their agenda items was the removal of the chieftain system in Mizoram. On the 16th of August, 1954, the Mizo Union petitioned the DC, the district uh, commissioner, to remove hered hered hereditary chieftainship and empower village council instead to run the internal administration of the villages instead of royal families. Thus ended the old era of chieftainship and began the new era of government by the people. Lalthangli and Asylo and his father were truly benevolent rulers. The Sielsu people loved them. Even today, Sielsu people gather together in a place to, commem to commemorate his life story, and they already send us pictures and so on. And my brothers and other people are very much active today uh, uh, talking about his life story. So even after the position of chiefs were terminated, the Silsu people still regard Lautanali and Asilo as Kanlaupa, meaning our Lord. Whenever he travels in Mizo, he has a reception there. And uh, the Silsu people still say this today, even though the Mizo Union and the DC have terminated the chieftain system, we have not terminated our chiefs. Lalung Neman, Lalthang Liana will always be Kanlalpa. Here's one more testimony from Pulun Tanga, which is, uh, I think Kyle is about to say that, I will not repeat that. <coughs> Indeed, Lalthang Liana was full of progress. He worked very, very hard when he knew his position of chief was about to be terminated. He felt the need to educate himself. Educated. He was, as a matter of fact, he was the most educated chief we ever had in Mizoram. Even the British left Mizoram, he was often called to interpret the, uh, the British officials. He once said that there was no official meeting without his presence. Uh, many of his achievements, his high school, he went to some training school run by Seventh-day Adventist missionary pastor O.W. Lamb. He was one of the first measles to be baptized as Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> then he went to Spicer Memorial College, Poonan, obtained BRE. You can see in your bulletin, he, he has two BA bachelor degree as well as two master degree. Amazing, amazing person. And his lifetime achievement really are admirable. And uh, let me skip certain things here so I don't repeat it, what's in your bulletin. He was a very hard worker, the most hard working person I've ever encountered. He worked in the Indian Embassy in the Information Department uh, from 1971 to 1985. At the same time, as soon as uh, his work is over, he has another job and he uh, would work in uh, Rockville, Chestnut Lodge Hospital there for 20, 20 years. And that's not all. Let's say he has a third job. He has a big vegetable garden. <laughs> really, really big one. I have worked in his garden by pulling up weeds before. And uh, he also have grape vines and and so on. When did he ever have time to rest? I do not know. He's a hard working man. Plus he has lots and lots of chickens and eggs, you know. And every time we go there, he would say, okay, have some, have some. And he had a miso, a burden for miso people, especially in the USA. And his advice is often, whenever we have a gathering, he would say that be the best citizen you, you can ever be in this country. And don't forget your ancient tradition of the Mizo, especially Tlongwena. Tlongwena is a, a, a Mizo philosophy of self-sacrifice or altruism. You can call it altruism. And he, he co-founded the Mizo Society of America 
uh, whose officers are here today, and he drafted the con Constitution along with Ronald Sapatow and others. He was one of the five founding members of Southern Asia at, at SDA Church, his church that we are, are here today. And he served here as his head elder and also elder for many, many years. He was also one of the founders of Mizo SDA Church here uh, in Chesapeake. <coughs> And he was also one of the founders of the Mizo Christian Fellowship. The first meeting, I remember uh, the day I arrived here in USA, October 22, 1982. He, Timoy, and uh, Pulau Mama, and others said, okay, let's, let's have a meeting tonight. And from there on, the elected officers and so on, they started meeting, and this group is still very active today. One thing I can never forget about Putang Liana, not only his work by hand, but also he was a very generous person. He established many, many churches in Mizoram, including the, uh, the, 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 the village that I come from, Seosu, where he reigned there. And he supported the lay evangelists there, and uh, we're gonna miss. It's very, very active. He did this, Jill, he was unable to do due to illness. Today, many Mizos live in many different parts of USA. <coughs> Mr. Tangli and Asylo encouraged all the Mizos, like I said, first of all, to be a good citizen of this country, and secondly, to adhere to the Mizo tradition and cultural values, especially from my now. The MSA organization is committed to carry out what Lao Tien Tang Lian has started, and his wishes will not be forgotten. The Bible says, Then I heard a voice from heaven write this Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor for their deeds. Follow. Amen. Uh, if you have the program sheet, you'll see an insert, a white insert in there. There are tributes from prominent people from Sialso Village and others. Uh, and you can read them later. I will not read them because of time. At this time, we will call, we will invite the Miso SDA Church Choir. I believe that the Sligo Miso Church group also is going to join them to sing a song or a tribute to Grandpa. Bye. 
Thank you for coming to honor the memory of Apu and celebrate his life. Uh, a couple years ago for his birthday, I gave a little, a little speech in our family get-together. I was saying how he was such a good man who's done so much, not just for our family, but for any friends, family who would come. Uh, then right after he gave a speech and said, oh, he's not all that great, he said, give all glory to God. And I was just like, oh, I was just trying to give a compliment, but I guess it, it, that just shows his devotion to uh, the Lord and his faith in God. Um, as Uncle John mentioned earlier, uh, his house was kind of known as the hotel you didn't have to pay. As a kid there, I've seen so many Mizos here now who are grown. Um, when they were young, Auntie Manu Bouquet and Auntie Florence, when they were young women, now they're grown with their own kids. Uh, so Abu's house is one of the two big memories I have. Just as kids, my cousins and I would go there, either weekends, summer vacations. It was the place we wanted to spend the night, uh, play together, inside, outside. And we also helped Abu with the garden. Not that we had a choice, it was, we were forced to help him outside of the garden. But it was mostly uh, my cousin, older cousin Salopari, Yamkema Zomoya, Apui, who did the work. Apu knew that me, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really gonna be much help. So he just said, Zosan, you can come too, but most of the expectation was on my cousins. Uh, we'd have, they'd have to build, uh, fill up maybe one or two big plastic bags full of uh, the sour leaves. Um, my, my bag was a little, not full, but it was okay. Uh, I will knew that. Uh, so um, now today, if you, you know this garden, much of the land is sold or not uh, as developed with all the plants anymore, but hundreds of years ago, back in the 1990s, if you remember the garden in its prime, it was just flourishing everywhere, uh, across the land, even up high with uh, grapevines, um, other fences that you had with uh, vegetables growing all over them. Um, for those of you who remember, it was quite a sight to see. Uh, I think uh, Abu's house, Abu's garden, and our family's uh, the legacy he will leave behind. Thank you. All right. Uh, now I'm going to read some of the um, tributes from Isol and Seal 
some visual part that uh, I was asked to read when he is reading the tribute stuff. The great silo chief is no more. Anchoi van rimnam Anchoi van rimnam rum ruma kan lenna kan van kosial tang sa silo lal nur pui chuan alay shing nun min her liam san ni hiya ikuale tui ten min ikuale tui ten min chong in your visions, your wisdom, and knowledge are great and priceless. We did not quite understand your vision towards improving knowledge and education at the time you left your throne and proceeded to a faraway place. Your life and deeds truly reveal the quality of the one whom we consider as the one who lives between the sun and the moon. Though your body is no longer with us, your deeds and life messages will always remain with the great bloom in our land and I bid you farewell and a peaceful rest. And the peace of God, which transcends all understandings, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Philippians 4 7. Uh, that's from Mr. Tantumoya Ulikon, my former resident of Sister. Uh, the next one from Upa Lalkyam Lava and family. Uh, we heard the news. Of our village chief, Pu Lantaliana Silo, is no more, makes us or made us miss him our hometown. Even though we no longer live in Siosu, the demise of Pu Lantaliana Silo leaves us wanting to go back to our roots and our old life in Siosu. We will dearly miss him. Our prayers would be Lalunoi uh, and her children. Sport complex. Uh, when I was a pastor in Seal Street, Presbyterian Church, Pru Lalpangana Silo often visited our residence that was located at the place of his former house. As our residence was in their old land, I could recognize that he still deeply missed his home whenever he came. We did not know each other before, but being an occupant of his old land, he always talked to me with open mind and respect. He was a very handsome man, and I respect him. We will not see him anymore in this world. That's a lonesome world now. I can recognize that he still belongs to Siosu. May he rest in peace. Let the Lord Jesus be with the bereaved family. Reverend John Shaw, We feel deeply saddened that our village chief, Kulatangyan Silo, is no more with us. May the Lord Jesus be with his wife and his children. Goodbye, our dear chief. That was from Rem Siema and his family, former president of Village Council, Seal Soup. No words can describe how tragic it is to acknowledge the sad demise of our village chief, Pulantangan Silo. We are sharing the sorrow of the grieving family with love and prayer. We bid farewell to Pulantangan Silo. That was from Mr. Ari R. Shanze, Shanzewala, and his family, Gonveng Seal Soup. The last standing pillar of our family, Pulantang Silo, is now elevated to the higher glory. Though we were living across the oceans, his presence was always felt with warm and, uh, warmth and affection in our hearts. He will remain within our hearts. We will meet again in the eternal house, not made with hands, but by God in heaven. We thank the Lord for your life, and we know that you will be looking down on us from heaven. That was from Mrs. Uh, Lampan Sangi, we call her Sang, Sang Pui, uh, daughter of Lalbing Tana, uh, <coughs> Mr. Lalbing Liana's brother. <coughs> Dora is the one who wrote it. Now this, this one is an uh, in Mizu, uh, 
This comes from Chief Minister, current Chief Minister of Mizoram, whose name is Lautan Hola. Um, dear Philan Nunmoe, if a Salatan in a silo board or two, a Shatuda tin a chong name, a real rule at in Lumtakin, Ganto Puita Zet, Ganto Puita Zet, Jew, and the young Rombol de Poimo, like Ocean Danach and him, I can chant the mighty Chana Rapta and we own Taxeda, a hun. Ahun all a siam he no kale a harbiya wang. Akal san tak nang le if fanao te le a chen le ruwa zong zong. In lung ta gen kan ti wa puya jew. Tal kwan sak na in tuam jew siala. Tam wana om pui zel tu jew in kan tu saka jew. He he kan tong chay na ane ye. Dear Aki Moi and families. Words fall short of expressing our heartfelt sorrow that we feel for the passing of our beloved uncle, Falcon Manasano. With a heavy heart, we pray for the repose of one who is a man of faith, compassion, and distinguished humanity. No one and nothing can fill the void created by the loss of our dear uncle, but the God Almighty. May God be ever present in guiding you through the days ahead. With love and prayer, Bari, Bari, Vala, Nute, and Shoi. These are his uh, nieces and nephews. <coughs> now, this is from uh, in Fatih Mizo, Mizo Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. This is a message. Mizo Adventist Tara Swal Sutu, Swal Sutu Le. Mizo Adventist Tepa Ni Jing Tak Krista Amin Lomut Hil San Dahi Kan Bawi Te Re Ngeem. Kok San Dana Acha Nem Mai Nale Atho Zong Zong Te Kan Sherengam. Mizo conference juan kan arsilian kan chanta a kan ngaya bilaw nun moi tu le fate an lusun na hiyan kan to kuitak zeta jew patiyan inom kuin samuan jew lo se di hi kan chong chay na ni Jerusalem tara kan in mule nge kan beise in rombo kui in fate Mizo conference This is from Lao Dun Thana เสียวสุขผู้เล่าทั้งเรียนสายเล่ากันชาเรียนนี้เฮียเกย์เล่าดุนทั้งเล่าดุนทั้งเฮียจงกำหนดคัดเลือกระวังจุ่มว่าทศ
United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issue 2006 can Putang Moya, ตินดาบุกาเนี่ยกระตุ้นตัดทําไมถึง Funeral MCCF, Mizo Christian Fellowship. I would like to give this compassion fund a small amount of money to be more in order to remember Mr. Rotangian Asylum. May God bless you. Rotangian Asylum, the MCCF. Member one of our pioneer, founder, and past president of Mizzou Society of America, whose unfaltering commitment and sacrifice we still feel experienced today. To be here today saying our goodbye to him is something I wish we did not have to do. We are deeply in pain and words cannot even express our sorrow. But we and the next generation to come will always remember in our hearts and history at this time to show our sympathy and love by giving a small gift uh, in Umami. Can Secretary? Thank 
春风，安尼落安尼。甲为爱人爱人，不通了啦。甲孙妈，为爱女婿，等不安甲侬苦白了呢。
at the loss of a loved one. It is said that the Greek philosopher Diogenes went around ancient Athens in the daytime with a lighted lantern searching for a man, a man like Mr. Silo, a rare scarcity in the midst of plenty. And so I apply to this great man the words of the wise man, one among a thousand I have found in Ecclesiastes 7.28. In doing so, I don't intend to suppress others. I do so to pay tribute to a rare gem of a man. After all, orchids need not distract from the beauty there is in roses and lilies. Or for that matter, even the plain daisies of the field. For each is the best of its kind. And Mr. Silo is one of a kind. A man of honor, dignity, integrity, justice, and respect. My life is richer because our paths crossed and I have been personally blessed by his acquaintance. This church is a testimony of his guidance and leadership. He had much to do for what we are today and for this beautiful facility that stands as a monument of his dedication and service, ministering to nearly a thousand people in this community now. He is one of the founding fathers of this church he served in various capacities in this church in its early organization. He also served as the elder and head elder of this church, and he served well. A man of integrity, honesty, straightforwardness, fairness, gentleness, and patience. During the challenging stages of the growth of this church, even though his friends and co-founders who worked with him closely, tried to sway him this way and that way, he could not be moved because he was a man of principles, wanting to always do what is right. So I apply to him the words of the prophetess, the greatest want of the world is the want of men. Men who will not be bought or sold, men who are in their inmost souls are true and honest, men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the poor, men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. In my association with him, he was such a man. I never knew him till I came to this church, and he never knew me. All my parents are here. But as a young man, as I served as the leader of this congregation, he stood by me through thick and thin. And no matter what others would say or do or want him to do, he would never move. He quietly stood his ground with much patience for what was right. Such a man of God I regard with great admiration. This church and I, as a pastor of this church for over 30 years, owe a great sense of gratitude for his steadfastness integrity, counsel, guidance, and for steering us through difficult times of this church's growth and history. Mrs. Silo, I don't know if you remember our first social program of this church 30 years ago was held in your house, in your backyard. We played and ate in your house. You both, you both taught us the one piece of song we know very well. As a church, we sing it so proudly, even though there are no mesos in our group. And people wonder, how do these people who look so different sing so well in miso? <laughs> when I went to Miso Ram two years ago to help in the hospital work, I proudly sang that song to the mesos, and they wondered how this man knows this song. Mr. Silo and I had common interests and hobbies. We loved raising chicken. I love raising it in India. So I enjoyed watching him grow. And one day he even gave me one 
to enjoy myself. I brought it home. I was the only one in my family, actually, while growing up as a teenager. I could uh, cut and dress the chicken. But when I brought this home, I chickened out. <laughs> And it took me some painful moments before I could slit the throat. I could never do that now in my old age. <laughs> Incidentally, I grow chickens in my backyard now. He loved pigeons and I had some. So he gave, I gave him a lot of pigeons, pigeons that he wanted to raise. I enjoyed watching him as a gardener because I loved gardening. He would give me some seedlings now and then, and uh, I would plant it in my garden. Mr. Silo and I lost such association after he, along with Mrs. Silo, left this church with no hard feelings whatsoever. In the friendliest of ways, they moved out as they were very anxious to start the Nizo congregation. When he had questions and challenges with a growing diesel congregation, he would come to my office and seek guidance from a little fellow like me. For a long time, we have not been in touch with each other. When he passed away, I was in Walla Walla, Washington. When I heard that it was his desire that he had said that he wanted me to do his children. Even after we had lost contact for so many years, I felt truly honored to fulfill the wishes of such an awesome man. His death is our loss. His life should be our blessing. And so, in the interest of time, the message that I have prepared for him I will not share because they said we got to leave here by 12.30 and there are some tributes to come. But I have only one message for you, Mr. Silo. The message that Paul gives. When you remember, Mr. Silo, remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead. That is the gospel. That is the good news. Because he lives, he will live also. Soon and very soon, we will see the king. Soon and very soon, we will see Mr. Smith. Amen. God bless you and keep you under this game. By now, you have heard a lot about my dad. He was a great man, well renowned and appreciated, loved and respected. But I saw him simply as my father. As a little girl, my earliest memories of him are of running to him as fast as I could, insanely happy to see him and to jump into his arms. He was just as happy to see me too. I remember how big he was, how his face was scratchy when he rubbed his cheeks against mine with affection. Ew, Abba, ow. Whenever he disciplined me, I never thought I deserved it. But I wanted to please him, so I tried very hard to be good. Some of you may know. I sometimes was not very good at being good. But he kept at it, always reminding me what was important in life, that in living good life, God, family, community, and generosity. Whenever I faltered, he was always there to catch me, encouraging me to keep trying. To my great annoyance, he never gave up on me. I see that now, and I'm a better person today because of him. As a family of immigrants, we all had to navigate the great United States of America together. All of us new to this land of milk and honey. We learned to pronounce funny new names together. 
words like chicken McNugget, which my dad always pronounced as chicken McNugget, <laughs> and hamburger, known to my mom and dad as hunger bird. <laughs> they never wanted to order at the drive-thru. Twenty years later, they finally admitted it was because no one could understand what they were trying to order. <laughs> They said that going inside was easier because they could just point. When my sister and I got a paper route, it was my dad who drove us around on the Monday mornings to help us deliver the papers. He worked two jobs and could still find time to help us. Sometimes we would earn a penny for each gray hair we could pluck from his head. There were a few. But I think he mostly enjoyed the closeness from his growing up all too fast girls. We went to church every Sabbath, where he would immediately fall asleep, snoring loudly. Touch. And he was a soft touch. Whenever we would want something from the store, we never asked Mom. She might not know this. <laughs> Always Dad. And he always, always indulged us. He was always there for us. So, Father, how do I say goodbye to you? It has been my greatest privilege to spend your last years by your side. You lost your ability to speak. <coughs> Maybe that's why we got along so well towards the end. I became the strong one, and you were able to lean on me. I encouraged you to try to walk and sing and talk, stand up straight. I never gave up on you. Even as you breathed your last breath, I cried out to you to stay with us. But God in his infinite wisdom wanted you to rest, to wait for him to call you home. And you were ready. You were and are so loved by so many. As you passed, we were all there with you. Our family, your friends and fellows in Christ, your pastors. They sang to you as you passed on the love of your life, your beloved wife of 60 years, was holding your hand. Hallelujah. And now, it is well with my soul. So, Daddy, Abu, Grandpa, Kapu, Galal, today we leave you with our prayers, knowing that you are at peace. A thousand prayers go with you, from Washington, D.C. to Mizoram, Rurki to Jalanda, from Spicer College to Howard University, Aizol to Nisalikan, their prayers will lay you to rest. Prayers from Light with God, from Bilkakir and Sailam. And of course, prayers from your beloved ancestral home, Siasu. All our prayers will carry you on. You have done great work here in God's name and set a high example for us to follow and remember. Thank you for that, Dad. I love you.
will be able to return here and celebrate the repast with us in a church fellowship hall. So as we say goodbye to my father-in-law, goodbye dad, goodbye, till <clears throat> Jesus comes again and takes us home with him. Thank you once again, one and all, for being with us and honoring us uh, on this very sad occasion. And thank you for all your words of encouragement, strength, and help. May God bless each one of us. And in a few seconds, as we proceed to his burial, and I hope as many of you can come, we'll return here for the repast. Thank you. God bless. <coughs> Unfortunately, because of time, we will not sing the closing song. Uh, we will call Pastor Watson Avancia to offer prayer for the family. Before he does that, I just have one announcement. Uh, right after the prayer, I would like the audience to please sit down again. The casket will be opened one last time, and this will be just for the family, and it will be just for five minutes. After that, we will all go to the gravesite. The interment at the gravesite will be conducted by Pastor Lavro Kuyapanai, and the gravesite pallbearers will be Rodona Vanciaro Varalte, Sandi Anapanai, Spatnik Darinuma, Lazziana Hanzo and Zomina Renfe. At this time, we will call Pastor Walchina to come and offer prayer. Let us all stand. Let's hold our hands. Our most gracious, loving, everlasting Father in heaven. We come here together with mixed heart. In some way, we are thankful and grateful for the life of full town and asylum. We have listened in heart and experience the impact he had on the life of so many people who have gathered together here and beyond that, Lord. There are countless of people. Even right there over the seas, in the Mizzou homeland, Lord, we thank you for his life and for the impact that he has left for us. Especially I thank you, Lord, for all the loved ones and friends who have gathered together here, giving him tribute for his life. We thank you, Lord, because we have a God who is God of the living and God of the dead. And we look forward to the day when we shall hear the sound of trumpet and all those people who are in the grave shall rise and meet the Lord in the air. That day may be soon coming. Maybe sooner than many people think. Oh Lord, when the time comes, shall we all be there for giving our sins and be there together with our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord for all these things. And as we march on to the grave here, let us have a, faith, a safe journey that none of us have any trouble or accident. And help us to finish our duty for you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit <coughs> that is abiding with us at this time. Thank you, Lord. Be with us of today. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs>
stay there. You don't have to come back, Robin.
เซียมตูจุงนุงเบรกันปะเทียนแห่คอเวลิคอเวลฟัมกิมบะลานีลอวะวางอินออลลปากันปะเทียนปุทังเลียนจุไวนาเฮียนกันลอทาเลียมตาม
ตะกะกันมันเถ่เถ่ตะตูรินชวลนะเตนิกลงนะเตขอลงนะเตไงตัวละวะจะตวนรัมมินเนนนะกินะมิงันลัมฮุนะกันเตลเวเถ่ตะ
kan bei sei tlat ani boi nia kal san ta ka chhum ko ale ko han le amai te zong zong lal pa tan rin om ta ka omin pathalian ne thole na masa kan in to khom thena turin kan in to le ngei thenan pathian in min vegin mal min som thyo ro se ki lo chong tai yang u lal pa thuti ama dong ai lo kan pathian cha tuan cha tuan rin om reng boi nia hian i thuti am ro pui tak mai mithi nang ma thi reng resitu ma an boral ve ngai do lo va i local en en ro pui tak mai a tha na changa kai tho a kan om le tur thu i thuti am ro pui tak vai voi ni a helal pa i ne na lom thu kan soya i ming thiak lim chu fakin om ro se do na hian bo chia na va nga i ro ma na te lo thi na wang chuan pa thang lian hi rei lo te chu then don kan lo ni ta a lalpa i thu ang ina tak sa de chu lei lunga thum ral om don ani amai ro chu bei sei nan kan thira lalpa i so krista min lam tur local huna chuan ro pui takin thi ni na in thu achunga ne ngai to lo tu ra pa thang lian kai thok ina om le ang ti bei sei nan kan thira chu ni chu lalpa a takin min mu ti rang che hoi ni a lalpa ko khan ten kan ti thei to biak ina ma suna in khom ro pui tak min boy sai sakawa pon in ena lom thu kan soya voine kan thil ti zong zong te khalal pa nang ma in ro pui na le chol moina nang ma chou in chang bolang se voine a athen ta ke ni ko khan le chung ko te min phereng la kan dam chung ni chiar dan te na kin min zir tir la rin om theyang bere ita na nuwa i local le ni ro pui a chol lal pa mi thi thol le na thang lian an mel lim taka mutu kan ni vek thainan ke ni po men tan puya min veng him turin lali so krista ming thial men chung zong zong ti khoi na kan on di le amen Kami puan ni mau.
ตัวเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียงเสียง